Things are starting to get a bit heated in the Zote Cup. We have Navi going up against Team Arthurs right now. And apparently Navi didn't get the memo. Arthurs went through the draft and they just picked everything that they wanted. They suddenly start once again with Ethereal, with their Nuburak, with Vala and Rhaegar. Four blood for bloods so that they can use later in the game and they have the damage to go with that. So apparently Navi didn't really know what to expect from the Russian team. If you followed the games on the channel, you of course know that they really love to play this composition, that they really like to go for a lot of blood for bloods on level 16 and drop tanks and also damage dealers alike. Navi either didn't care or didn't know. They went for a strong composition themselves, but they didn't really adjust to what Arthurs was doing here. So a very interesting game unfolding in front of us right now, where Navi has to prove that they are strong enough to go up against this composition that Arthurs has been using for quite some time now. Next game coming up here in Color TV, Team Arthurs against Navi. Welcome everybody to the semi-final at the Zote Cup tournament and we have a pretty crazy game once again. Arthurs playing versus Navi and we all know and love the Russian team of course for their crazy combos and uh, they don't disappoint. They go for a Nuburak Tyrael again with their blood for blood style. Stalk on a Nuburak, Sef Kaja on Rega, Andy Lendi on Jaina, Kunichan on Tyrael in this game and Unstable on Bala. Four blood for bloods and two initiators. The way that they like it, and to the right side Five, of the map, we are having four, Navi with three, Breeze on Diablo in two, red, Splendor on Uther, Aethernal on Sylvana, Cilium on Tassada, and Schwimpy on Taranda. And the one thing that became very, very obvious is that the the hero that Navi really wanted to play on the to pick on the last uh, pick was Zagara. They wanted to go into more into Apocalypse, and they waited a long, long time and decided to go into Tassada instead. Oh, Kunichan! Might die here. No, nope, he gets away. Really nice attempt by Navi to go straight in and try and kill him with a Taranda stun and the Hunter Smart, but in this case it didn't really work out. But as I said, originally they were thinking about Zagara here going more into Apocalypse, but then they decided to just simply go for Tassada so that they have another hero that can provide a shield, additional healing, and it's a bit tougher to kill. Which in my opinion is very, very good when you are playing against what we're currently seeing here from Team Arthurs. Since they've shown this build several times right now, this hero composition is one of the things that makes them so dangerous. And especially at level 16, when they get their blood for bloods on four heroes, they can drop any target in the game within seconds. And one of the really big, big things of their comp hinges on uh, Uther. Uther is a hero that they ban out oftentimes. In this game, they ban out Illidan instead. And with Splendor picking Uther immediately for the Divine Shield on level 10, it's very likely that Stark this time is not going to pick the the uh, Locust Swamp on level 10, but instead Web Blast, which they did against several other teams that ran Uther against them, so that they can isolate Uther with the Web Blast and then get their Blood for Blood Burst combo into blessed. play, isolate one of the targets, take it down, kill it before Uther is gone, and then move straight in and win that fight. That's the idea that they have with that draft, and we're gonna find out if Navi is able to break through that. Navi here with Soul Feast on level one. They're currently looking at a double conjurer's pursuit, and of course on the map with Diablo and Taranda, they're trying to kill a few targets, and so far they've been unsuccessful. This is one of the strong things when you are running that build that we see for Navi here, trying to go straight into Diablo and also into Tyranda, and with those two, they're going to be able to just like kill anything on the map if they get the comp off properly. They just need to go from stun into stun. Celium apparently with a couple of problems, very weird problems at that. Apparently he's unable to move properly on the map with his hero, which sounds like a very interesting bug, something that we didn't really get that to. Uh, Apparently there is a fix for that, which is even more interesting because I had no idea that even existed, but apparently it's so yeah, common that there is even a known fix to it. Either way, Celium is going to try and fix that. He's getting away for now, but... Oh, is he? No, he's not. He dies to that. Kunichan and Andilandi were already on the hunt and they take him on. First blood here. And yeah, of course a bit unfortunate for Celium, but then again... The rotation is already happening. They are not going to miss out on too much experience here, so Splendor is in position. Uh, Celium isn't happy about that. Uh, apparently, that bug yeah, causing him to die there. Well, you can always argue about that, of course. I'm not quite sure when exactly he started to move and when that occurred, but either way, it's not going to decide this game one way or another. We have Stark initiating in, trying to go for Eternal. The wave is there, and Schwimpy rotates down to the bottom lane to help out his mate. 
But of course, at this point in time, you already have two of the shrines taken by the Russian team. And they are trying to push them back. We have Jaina in the mid lane, attempting to steal that shrine away. Smite build on Tyriel, multi-shot build on Vala. And at the bottom lane, now we're seeing a new Burak on level 4 with the Beetle Talon again. As on level 1, the extended spikes have been chosen. Sefkaja, on this particular hero, what we usually see him do is... Yeah, go for the additional heal on level 13, and uh, yeah, that's actually something that we see him do quite often. Not go for Feral Lunge, then on level 16, go straight for the Blood for Blood. So that's probably what's going to happen here once again. The shield on level 7 is, of course, a no-brainer if you're playing with Rhaegar these days. A double healing ward on the side of Navi, with one on Tassada and the other one on Taranda. Surprises me a bit. I would have thought that they would go into double protective shield and only add one healing ward. They decided to not do that and go for two healing wards instead. It's going to be interesting how that comes into play later. That's really going to help them out there. Nice move! Stunning Diablo out so that they didn't lose the Siege Giant camp. If Diablo gets in there, then it's pretty tricky to really take that camp and kill him first. So very, very well done at that part. They have now a camp pushing in the bot lane and that is of course going to create some space for the rest of the Arthas players. We're having to the top in uh, this particular moment, Celium against Punichan. And Andy Lendi is moving in now too. They're trying to force him into the dimensional shift first. Ooh, and one, two. They're gonna get him again, aren't they? Yes, there they are. They have Envenom on uh, Jaina, which is actually a talent that we don't see all that often. These days, there are three talents that you can take. You can either increase your trade, you can go for the Blizzard Radius, or you can go for Envenom. And Envenom is for at least the Russian team, usually what they use as weapon of choice. They got two kills already against Celium, both of them against Tassada up there, which is actually quite nice. I mean, one of the main reasons why they go for Tassada is because he is quite isolated from the rest of the team, and there's nobody that can really just rush to his aid. And even with his dimensional shift, it's pretty easy for them to take him down when they have two heroes moving in, especially since we have now within Venom and Jaina just so much burst damage in addition to everything else that she has there. To the bot lane, attempting already to take that shrine again. Level 8 versus level 8. And we are seeing the seven talents coming now into play with a static charge, follow through, cleanse and battle momentum. And especially that cleanse is going to be important. Tyriel is of course going to pick judgment here. And if Splendor, which usually is like on his Uther, if he's really on top of things, he should be able to see when exactly judgment is being used and then cleanse it out. And that's what he's gonna try. Because if you do not do that, then suddenly that target that gets judgmented upon will be hit by at least one blizzard and those blood for bloods on level 16 are gonna come into play again. This is a style that the Russians have been using for quite some time now and very successfully at that they already took down LDLC with a 2-0 in the ESL Major League on the first play day in Season 2 and LDLC knew about the drafts and really tried to even ban out Anubarak against them but they didn't really find appropriate like uh, a solution uh, to the problem so they're doing what they can and of course Navi is going to attempt to do the same thing here but already the top lane is being pushed pretty hard with the divisional Bruza talent starting to push in and we're seeing they move in again against Kunichan, but the rest of the team is there and Schwimpy doesn't stand a chance. Level 10 already taken and Breeze is body blocked into oblivion. They drop two targets and it's a 4-0 and they don't even stop there. It's the Russians and they just go for it. They just YOLO into that fort. They're just thinking this doesn't matter. Take down that Tasta again. They hate they claim one, two, three deaths right now. And of course, they're going to take not only that tower, but also that fort. Nearly a two level lead at that point. Well, not quite. I guess a one level lead. But that earlier level 10 really working for them. We have, interestingly enough, and I'm surprised by that, I have to admit it, we have Locust Swarm taken over Web. Web, every time I saw them play against an Uther, they chose Web to isolate Uther, use the Blood for Blood. In this case, they really tried to make him as tanky as possible with the Web Blast. Sefka down here is most likely gonna... No! He survives! Wow. Sefkaja on his dog survives for now. They're able to save him here, but we have, of course, next to that, Judgment, Reign of Vengeance, Summoning Water Elemental, and uh, the Ancestral Healing as heroic abilities. No Web Blast, so it's going to be a bit trickier for them to really yeah, take a target down once Uther has now his Divine Shield in play. Once that 16 hits for the Blood for Blast. The Wailing Arrow, not a surprise here. We're having Starfall, Archon, and also 
Apocalypse taken on the side of the uh, of Team Navi. Up to the top lane, Tassada is starting to push that lane in again, but he needs to be super careful, and he is because he got killed three times by now, and oftentimes because of rotations that happened on the map, and he wasn't really too happy uh, with that. Kunichan is moving in now down to the bot lane, and uh, we're having at this point him just checking if that Bruiser camp is being taken. In the mid lane, Andy Lendi against Splendor. And Kunichan still watching out what's happening down there where Breeze is currently going for that shrine. He's waiting for Sefka and the rest. Still a little bit surprised that we didn't see the web blast here. They changed things up. The last time that I saw that they lost the game in the end, maybe they decided that web blast wasn't really worth it for them. A lot hinges on the talent that they go for it. But will they add it? Will they add a sustain on an Uburak? They might be able to just like commit into those fights a bit more. So it's an interesting choice considering how they usually played this. Probably gonna talk to them later a bit and ask what made them uh, go for it. Since they are what made them change their mind on the talent. Now they're initiating in again, going straight for Breeze. He is getting really low. He uses even Apocalypse here to get away. Starfall, Judgment, everything being used. And he dies regardless. And not only him, everybody dies. Three heroes down, Jaina, Uza and Diablo. And they are not stopping here, are they? They take the entire wall, they go for Celio. He went already for Arkham, is trying to escape, but uh, this is just the Russians rushing in and taking everybody on here. They have now Frost Shot, they have on the side of Tyrael here imposing will. We're seeing the healing talent on uh, Seth Kaja with the healing surge. And Burning Rage only on Anubarak, which is also a bit of an adjustment since normally when they run with Tyrael and Anubarak, they have on both of their frontliners Burning Rage. But in this case, they went for Imposing Will instead. Oh, the Owl and Milendi gets the Dragonite. The timing for them is perfect. And Team Arthur is, is just going all out with this. So far, an amazing play by them. And Navi is really struggling, as you can see. 15 against 12, soon to be 13 of course, and that extra talent is going to help them. But now they are starting to lose the wall here in the mid lane. They lost two of the forts, and this is going to be fort number three. Chances that they are going to keep that alive are very, very slim. Slim to none, since Rhaegar is now moving in too, and this makes it a 5 versus 5 battle with a 2 level advantage for Team Arthas. We're having Distortion Beam taken, the Spell Shield, Shrink Ray, Relentless, and Overflowing Light on the side of Navi on level 13 now. The fort is already gone, Kunichan moved in here, needs to go back at least for now, and yes, there we have it, Andy Landy with another 10 seconds on the Dragonite, still attempting to take down a few of those structures. If he can just break the towers, that of course will already be great for him. With 4 seconds on the DK, he needs to be careful, but all that damage has already been dished out and both of the towers are nearly gone. Breeze and his teammates, they're not really following through just yet, especially of course since level 16 is going to hit any second now for the Russian team and that will put those Blood for Bloods into their hands. 4 Blood for Bloods, that is going to be where it gets really nasty for Navi. 4 Blood for Bloods and Northern Exposure. And now it is extremely dangerous, even for Diablo, who could be dropped within seconds. Oh, they see him, and they're gonna jump him in just a second. Here comes the stun, and goodbye Diablo. Diablo already dead, dropped within seconds. Wasn't even a contest, not even close. Hashtag wrecked, and now they're going straight for that wall. And Navi, I mean, they're struggling. What can you do at this point? They're really starting to struggle. They're three levels behind, an entire talent behind. And currently, it's just the Russians trying to go straight for the first key. Team Arthurs is doing exceptionally well here. You need to be careful since Kunichan is rather low, and he also doesn't have mana left. One of the main reasons why they start to move away here, since he's dropping in the mana pool too. He couldn't really get that keep at this point, but they are moving straight for that first Siege Shine camp. Stealing it away from Navi. And as long as they have that massive talent leader in this case, they can just dominate the map, have full map control, de-push the top lane, gather more experience, take the rest of the camps, get closer and closer to level 20, and make exactly that work. So right now we're having Arthurs with Anubarak up to the top lane, making sure that with the burning rage and the stuns, he's just like keep pushing that lane quite easily, making sure that not even the towers are being dropped. Of course, did we have a couple of towers taken? One. One tower is all that Navi was able to take just yet. Looking at the uh, kills, four times Celium was eliminated, and there's not a single kill on the board for Navi. Ten kills against zero in this match. And it's very, very tricky right now for them. 
80,000 damage against Siege already on the side of Vala. If you look at the hero damage, and especially Sylvanas is of course leading the charts here with 22,000, but that doesn't really help them if they're not able to kill their targets. We're having now with the next talents coming in for Team Navi, probably gonna see... I mean, they, they are gonna have a bit more damage on level 16 with the potential Cold Embrace, at least yes, one executor. potential blood for blood if they go for Sylvanas, doesn't really matter what they're gonna get here. But in general, it's just not gonna add a whole lot more to the table for them, whereas the level 16 talent on the side of Team Arthurs is just putting, this, putting so much use into their hands. This is going to be pretty brutal. Um, we're having at this point in time in the mid lane already an attempt to take the Dragonite again. And at least Taranda can help out a bit with the overflowing light here and the heals. She's of course going to go... Oh! Uh, well, first of all, she's not going to go for anything. She's going to be scattered to the ground because she died there already. But with a two-shot R on level 16, they are going to get a flat-out damage in the total. Um, that's going to help, but we might not even see them being able to put that to use. The keep is gone. Are they really going to go for core here? It looks like it. They just move through the keep and go straight for the core. 13 minute Dragonite. They're trying to go for it. And with the Blood for Bloods, they're starting to do the damage. Here comes the Apocalypse. Doesn't really do too much. And they go in. Stonk! He's about to die. Kunichan gets healed. They go straight for that core initiation. Utha with the Judgment, oh sorry, Tyrrell with a Judgment, but 20% on the core, they might not be able to save the Earth, it's close, and it's over. Team Arthurs takes down Na'Vi, 14 minute game, and the Russians advance to the final of the Zodiac Cup. Na'Vi not prepared, they weren't really ready for the level 16 here. You could really tell how aggressive once again the Russian team was. Doing so much damage, jumping into these positions and just saying like, all right, we take you on right now. And Na'Vi was so pressured the entire time. And then especially when level 16 hit, you could tell that it was so tricky for Na'Vi to keep the heroes alive. So on Dragonshire, Arthurs once again decide another map in their favor, advance in the bracket in the Zotic Cup. Na'Vi is out and we're gonna see pretty soon who Arthurs is going to face in the next round. Guys, if you enjoyed the game today, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. If you have any questions about the compositions, about the heroes that especially Arthurs has been using here, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section on YouTube. I'm going to see you guys next time with more Heroes of the Storm content here on Color TV. Bye-bye.